Epimar and Anomar. Dash trimers differing only one configuration of one carbon atom is called epimers. That means if you have two dash trimer which are differing only at the configuration of one carbon, that is epimer. Any two molecules differing in the stereochemistry of only one carbon atom. Now see the structure of inositol and epiinositol. Here you can see that this OH if you just start naming with one this two so the OH group of the third carbon atom here see one two three this is in the back right in case of inositol this was in the front and in case of epi inositol this is in the back that means there is only difference in the configuration of one carbon atom that's why these are epimers. In carbohydrate chemistry, mannose is the C2 epimer and galactose is the C4 epimer of glucose. You must remember this. This is a very important thing that you can get in any kind of exam. This type of MCQ that mannose is the C2 epimer and galactose is the C4 epimer of glucose. Now anomers. What is anomer? In carbohydrate chemistry, diastereomers differing only at the hemiacetal or acetal carbon are called anomers. And the hemiacetal or acetal carbon atom is called the anomeric carbon atom. This is your aldehyde group. This is the hemiacetal carbon. This is actually called anomeric carbon. And these two are the anomers, which forms after the ring closure. The furanose or pyranose form of a carbohydrate oh 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 sorry what is happening mm -hmm. yes the furanose or pyranose form of a carbohydrate has one more asymmetric carbon than the open chain form here you can see that in the open chain form there were only four asymmetric carbons this 2, 3, 4 and 5 but in case of the chain structure the one number of carbon is also an um, asymmetric carbon so in case of this in case of the ring closure you can get 5 asymmetric carbons thus there are 2 possible diastereomers of D-glucopyranose so you will get extra 2 structures that means if the OH is in the right side you will get one anomer if the OH is the left side you will get another anomer actually if the OH is in the right side that is the alpha anomer and if the OH is in the left side that is the beta anomer okay so which one is alpha and which one is the beta anomer okay you have to understand this very carefully in Fischer projection the anomer in which the hemiacetal OH group is on the same side as the oxygen atom at the configurational carbon is called alpha anomer. That means if the hemiacetal OH is in the same side of this oxygen, which is the oxygen atom of the, um, what can I say? This is the oxygen atom which which is forming the ring. If these two are in the same side, that will give you alpha anomer. And now see that in this case the OH is in the one side and this O is another side that's why this is the beta form this oxygen is making the ring this oxygen and the number one asymmetric carbon attached oxygen is on the opposite side that's why this is the beta anomer this is for the case of Fischer projection now come in case of Howard projection the anomer in which the hemiacetal OH group is in the opposite side of the CH2OH group of the configurational carbon is alpha anomer. This is your anomeric carbon. This is your configurational carbon. So OH group and this CH2OH group are in the different position. That's why this is the alpha anomer. And here the anomeric carbon and this is the OH group 
here the configurational carbon and this is a CH2OH group these two groups are in the same side that's why this is the beta anomal in case of heart protection you have to see this now in case of chair form the anomal in which the hemiacetal OH is in the axial position while the CH2OH group is in the equatorial is called the alpha anomal so if the OH group anomalic OH group is in the axial position not only that this CH2OH group have to be in the equatorial this will be alpha because if you just make a ring flip this CH2OH will go in the um, axial and then you cannot say this that if the OH is also in the axial then that will alpha that will actually be then beta now you see that this if, 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 if you just do a ring flip this CH2OH and this OH both of them will go to the axial position that will be beta because in this case when CH2OH group which you have to keep fixed at the equatorial position if CH2OH group is in the equatorial and then if the OH group anomalic OH is also in the equatorial that will give you the beta anomaly this is the line and weight structure you can check that this will be the beta anomal this is the beta and this is the anomalic carbon you can see this one is the anomalic carbon this is the chain formation of alpha D glucose this is the D glucose you are getting alpha D glucose and beta D glucose from this open chain structure and in case of D fructose similarly you are getting alpha D fructose and beta D fructose just take a look in case of alpha D glucose the OH is in the opposite side of this CH2OH in case of beta D glucose the anomalic OH is in the same side of this CH2OH similarly in case of fructose you will see that uh, actually here in case of fructose you will see that this OH is in the different side and this CH2OH both of group are in the same side and in the beta D fructose both CH2OH is in the trans position that means in the opposite phase that's why this is the beta and where the two CH2OH are in the same side that one is the alpha now come to a short description of Howard's prediction this is actually your D glucose the ring form of your D glucose you are just making a fissure rotation in the this manner so your oxygen will come here your CH2OH will group will come here and this oxygen is attacking this carbonyl group from the back so this is your ring form now if it is folded around a barrel or drum such an interpretation of the fissure projection of beta d glucopyranose yields the following structure uh, actually i have made a mistake this will be the capital d not the small d so if you take this you will get this structure in case of howard's projection and if you just make 90 degree that means if you flat this you will get this structure where you can see this anomalic OH is in the same position of this CH2OH so it will be beta beta anomal of D glucose when the plane of the ring is turned 90 degree so that the anomalic carbon is on the right and the ring oxygen is in the rear the groups in up positions are those that are on the left in the fissure projections now see again that in case of 
the fissure projection which groups are in the left these groups if these are in the left these will be in the up position of this heart projection you can see the first OH is on the left here the OH is on the left then the third OH is on the left here the third OH is also on the upper side and here CH2OH is on the left so CH2OH is also in the upper side so this is very closely related to the fissure projection you can get the heart projection from the fissure projection first make the ring closer and then just turn it 90 degree whereas the groups in down positions are those that are on the right in the fissure projection a planar structure of this sort is called a Hawarth projection. In a Hawarth projection, the ring is drawn in a plane perpendicular to the page and the positions of the substituents are indicated with up or down bonds. The waist bonds are in front of the page and the others are in the back. So, this is in front of you. And these groups OH CH2OH these two groups are in the upside okay this OH OH and CH2OH so if you take line weight structure you have to make them in bold okay bold structure OH OH and CH2OH and you are obviously just watching this molecule from this direction that's why these three structures these three positions are in front of your eyes and this OH OH are in back of your eye that's why this OH will be dashed now again you are getting a fissure projection of D glucose then you are making a fissure rotation in this manner then this OH is attacking this carbon and the bond is being opened so again you can um, rotate the C1 C2 bond that means if you rotate this bond the carbonyl will go down and if now this oxygen attacks the OH will be in the back that means in the down position and now in this case if the OH attacks the OH will be in the up position that means this is the beta d glucopyranose and this is the alpha d glucopyranose look again and try to understand this in case of d fructose the same thing happens that make take the fissure projection of d fructose make like this structure and now take a cyclic permutation after that if this OH attacks this carbonyl group you will get this structure which is the alpha D fructofuranols and if this 2-3 bonds rotates this 2-3 bond rotates uh, so you will get actually this structure where the o C double one O is in the upside. So if now the oxygen attacks the carbon, the OH will be in the upside. The OH is in the upside. So in this case, you will get the beta D fructofuranose.